to share with you tonight a moment in the life of my Lord that if it had not been for this moment in the life of my elder brother none of this would be possible I find him a very strong man. We often use the expression in our generation in the world of Christianity how marvelous it is to be Christ like. But I find him at this moment God like. For he is now standing before Pilate and because he's going to stand there on this moment a 
man named Herod, the mighty Judge Pilate, become intimate friends because of this moment in the life of me Lord I see his favorite disciple a team member of his evangelistic endeavors denying him twice and now he stands alone and he is being badgered with questions before Pilate but he opens the scene with these words my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would not my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews but now is my kingdom not from hence Pilate therefore said to him art thou the king Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born. And for this cause I came into the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth. Heareth my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find, I find no fault in him. Hallelujah. But we have a custom that I should release unto you one that is a Passover. Well, therefore, that I release unto you the king of the Jews. Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a thief. Then when Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put onto him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. And then Pilate went forth again and said to them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe and Pilate said unto them behold the man when the chief priest therefore and officers saw him they cried out saying crucify him crucify him and Pilate said unto them take ye he and curse him and I find I find no fault in him I find that Pilate cried these words three times I find no fault in him father Your anointing is so heavy that it is difficult to speak in a language that 
the awaiting audience can understand. Indeed, the Holy Spirit is in this place. Father, I accept your divine will for this hour. I believe that once again, that each of us shall be lost in the realm of that anointing of the heavenly world. The needs are met spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, whatever category they are met. Lord Jesus, I pray because I ask in the names of that blessed Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. I would like to ask you this question. What will you do with this man called Jesus? You see, we're faced with that decision. And never in my life have I realized more the urgency of that factor then tonight what will you do with this man called Jesus I've heard about Jesus all of my life he's not a stranger I know him well I know him as my savior. I know him as my healer. I know him as my infiller. I know him as my constant companion. And tonight I don't even need to say to him, I love you, Father. For he already knows it. That I love him. But for some reason, I do not understand the reason or the why, the purpose, the cause. But I live in a world of spiritual snobs who are a bit ashamed of Jesus. We need him. We love him. We fear him. We honor him. But we love to conceal him. That nobody knows that we have been with this man called Jesus. I suppose that I have a spiritual desire that is most unusual. In my praying in the last six months, I've been seeking the throne of God for something in my life that may sound to you as far-fetched as anything you'll ever hear. I have been asking God that every person I pray for in the healing line that has cancer, that they will be healed instantaneously. I'm seeking that place in God. That may sound strange to you. But read your book. Read your Bible. The gifts of healing. I believe that God is a specialist. 
And I believe that God can make men to specialize in certain areas of the realm of the Holy Ghost. I want to see malignancy in Christians vanish. That's my desire. You say, man, I've never heard a man say that before. In the days to come, you'll hear more about it. Other men are going to start doing the same thing. It's coming. As sure as my name is Jerry B., it's coming. I told you so. But there's a desire that is even greater than that. And I have an elder brother who had a friend that became like him. That even as he walked down the street, they laid the sick on cots and couches. And they were healed, every one, as he passed by. But that's not my number one desire, to be like Peter. But I am striving to that realm where the word of God says, Be ye therefore perfect, as your Father which art in heaven is perfect. And this is the thing that I strive for more than anything else. To be like Jesus. You say, but Jerry B., you've got to remember that you're in a church world where one church is jealous of the other. Mm -hmm, I know. Jerry B., you're in a church world where one pastor won't fellowship with the same faith, the same kind across town because there's a spirit of Jealousy. Yes, I know. But that doesn't have to be. We need to come before God and may the world say about us as believers, followers of God Himself, I find no fault in them. Can you imagine Mount Sinai Wholeness Assembly of God Church saying about Brightmoor Tabernacle, man, I find no fault in that church. It's quiet, isn't it? Quiet, isn't it, Brother Dago? We need to come to that place that our lives measure under that plumb line. That even the world can say, I find no fault in that Christian. It's quiet, isn't it? I smell hide burning. <laughs> Lady Peg and Bill Blass, I've been looking for you all over church. I thought you all was out farming around. They usually sit back over here, but they got moved out. Glory to God. They're getting close to the front. Maybe Peg will shout tonight. But can you imagine having a Christian brother that when you visit with him, he will not criticize you or find fault in you? Wouldn't it be glorious? I've got friends I love with all of my heart. But I know that when I'm with them five minutes, they're going to find fault. That's their ministry. <laughs> They've got the ministry of finding fault. But neighbor Pilate was not even a born again assembly of God Christian. But yet he could look at a Christian and say, I find no fault in this man. He said it three times. To be Christ-like is a place wherein we 
arise above and beyond criticism. But you can go around some folks in five minutes you feel like a garbage can. It's the truth. Several years ago, I had a summit conference with my employer. And I was in a great board meeting with my Lord. And I began to do some very strong dealings with my master. And I began to make some commitments. And my superior evangelist back tonight will relate from where I'm coming from. I said, God, I don't want to be ordinary. I want to be different. I don't want to walk like any other preacher I know. I don't want to preach like any other preacher I know. I don't want to relate to the audience like any other preacher I know. I want to be just what you want me to be. And nowadays, folks copy me. Danny B. What a compliment. But I said, now God, to have this power, I know there are some commitments I must make. And those commitments first was this. God, if you give me power, I will always deal with sin fairly. I will not compromise. I will not try to color it a different color. If it's black, it's black. If it's bad, it's bad. If it's impure, it's impure. And I'll not change the issue, God. I'll preach it like it is. And I've kept that commitment, as you well know. And then I said, now, Daddy God, there's something else I'll do if you'll let me enjoy the fervor of walking in the Spirit. God, if you let me have that certain charisma, that certain touch, Father, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will never pass on anything about anyone that would harm he or she. Whew. God, I just lost this audience. Find no fault in him. Several years ago, I was pastoring my first and my last church. And I was a very successful pastor. I had it made. I was recognized by the community. Write-ups were in the paper about a 19-year-old pastor that was successful. But while I was pastoring, I learned many lessons. One day my father came to visit me from his pastoral duties about 600 miles away. And one of the ladies in our church gave birth to a bouncing baby. And my father and I went to see the baby at the window. I said, Daddy, isn't that the ugliest critter you've ever seen in your life? My father twirled me around on my heels and he said, Jerry B, as a pastor, they're all beautiful. I say, but daddy, it's wrinkled, it's red, it's screaming, kicking. He said, but you don't understand, son. If that was your baby, you would think it was the most gorgeous creature. 
that God ever let breathe. Yeah, I know. I've heard some of you folks say the same about yours. My opinion is sealed. <laughs> and a few minutes as I was standing at that baby window, and all those little critters were doing their things, here come the father of the child. He said, oh, pastor, did you see my beautiful baby? And I looked at the corner of my eye at my elder father, and I said, yes, I have. He has a pug nose. <laughs> but when you come to a place in God where you ought to be, you can't find fault with your brother or your sister. You love them because they're a part of you. I find no fault in him. As my Savior, he has saved me. I've lived for him all of my life. I've never desired to live any other way except one time for two days I tried to backslide and my mother wouldn't let me. I find no fault in him as a savior. I find no fault in him as a companion. He never leaves me, neither does he forsake me. He is as near as my next breath I'm about to breathe. Now he's there. I find no fault in him as a companion. I find no fault in him as an instructor. Because his instructions has always caused me to walk the straight and the narrow path. I find no fault in his instructions. As my shepherd, I find no fault in his correction. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. When I'm right, I'm right. But he gives me honor for being right. I find no fault in him as a shepherd. Oh, I feel it coming on. Come on, black saints. Where's farmer tonight? He's out farming around, it looks like. I want to tell you about him as a baptizer. I find no fault with him as a baptizer. His Holy Spirit is constantly abiding within me when I need to talk to him directly where the devil can't understand. He gives me a language that even Satan cannot decipher. He is a baptizer. I find no fault in him as a baptizer. Mm. Somebody ready? Honey, I find no fault in him as a Pentecostal gyrating power of his spirit. He knows how to make me leap for joy, run for joy, shout for joy, clap my hands for joy, sing for joy. I find no fault in him as a baptizer. Mm. I could preach black right now. him in sparing me as being my attorney he's never lost a case I find no fault in him as my personal representative in the throne room of glory I find no fault in him as a comforter because when I am lonely, he abides with me. He will never leave me, neither will he forsake me. He will walk with me through the valley. He'll go with me through the mountain. He'll go with me through the waters. I find no fault in him as a comforter. Let's go a little further. 
I find no fault in him as a friend. You may not believe this, but he loves me when I'm good or bad. I should have put the word stool pigeon before that. I forget about all you Italianos in here tonight, you Greeks. I find no fault in him. As a friend, I tell him a secret and it will never be uttered again. I find no fault in him. Come on, honey. Get ready. I find no fault in him as my doctor. The case, the case may be diagnosed as terminal, but he's still the healer. I find no fault in him as a surgeon. I find no fault in him as a doctor. He's there to be with me when I'm ill. Hallelujah. I find no fault in him. When I've got the colic, he can lay his hand on my stomach and breathe a breath of heaven. It's all gone. I find no fault in him as my protector, my bodyguard. Neighbor, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard against him. I find no fault in him. I find no fault. As my protector. I believe in him so strongly. That I can lay down in the very presence of thieves. But they cannot touch my barns or my dwelling. When his blood covers them. They cannot cross the bloodline of Emmanuel's bloodstream. Say amen. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him as my pilot. Several years ago, I was flying to Virginia. And all of a sudden, the captain came on the squawk box. He said, ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry to inform you of this, but we have mechanical problems. And we're going to have to go in for a belly landing. What a marvelous thing to say instead of a crash landing. <laughs> the man next to me said, are you afraid? I said, no. I said, my angel's here with me. And I said, it's just a shortcut home. He said, oh, you live in South Carolina? I said, no. He said, well, what in the world are you afraid? I said, I'm saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. <laughs> he said, pray. I said, I prayed before I left. The man got up in the seat and put his arm on my shoulder. He said, I said, pray. I said, I'm not praying lick, sir. He said, I'll give you my wristwatch. I said, the way we're going, I won't need it. <laughs> he pulled out his wallet and he said, sir, I'll give you everything in my world, even the picture of my wife, if you'll pray. I said, I don't have to pray. I prayed before I left. Mama prayed. I'm safe in the arms of God. He said, what about me? I said, climb aboard. Did you know that guy got saved? <laughs> and 
And all of a sudden, I looked down at Charleston, South Carolina runway, honey. And it was snowing in August. Everybody bent their head over their pillows, and we got all tied up in a knot, ready for landing. I said, Jesus, I'm coming home. But my pilot said to me, no, you've got a safe landing. And when that big old goony bird hit that runway, it skidded sideways, crooked ways, every way you can imagine. Oh, it was a thrill. <laughs> Ronnie has the roller coaster ministry. He loves a roller coaster. If you ever take him to Coney Island, you just leave him there all day long. Just buy 40 tickets and he'll just ride around and around and over and up and down. Honey, I don't have the roller coaster ministry. <laughs> but I enjoyed that skidding and carrying on. And when we finally stopped, the man next to me had his arms around my shoulder squeezing. Pray! <laughs> I said, I prayed before I left. I told you that. I said, we're safe on the ground. He took his wristwatch back. <laughs> My pilot. Neighbor, when you have him as a pilot, you have no fault in him. For he knows how to give you a landing without a scratch, without a bruise, without a hurt. He's a God who knows how to make a way for you where there seemeth no way. I find no fault in him as a pilot. Do you want some more? Let me tell you about him. As my doctor, honey, when I have to have some removed, uh, he knows how to go in and put a brand new part in. I find no fault in him as a doctor, a surgeon. He knows how when the world can fail, he's standing there to say, it's done this way. I find no fault in him. As a provider, it's going to blow your mind. You that remember the blessing clubs, I'm sorry. They have failed during the Depression. When the endowment has been spent on pyramids and they go broke, <laughs> my provider will be standing there supplying my need according to his riches in glory i find no fault in him as a provider you ready for another one as a banker uh oh it's quiet now in this presbyterian judge or is this Methodist? I forget what it is. All the, it just says Brightmore. I don't know what that means. But as my banker, do you know that all he requires of me is 10%? All the rest is mine. It's quiet, isn't it? Shh. If you amen, they'll think you're guilty. As my banker, as long as I give him 10% of everything that comes my way, he opens the windows of heaven and no good thing will he hold from me as my banker. I find no fault in him as my banker. Well, bro, bless God, I ain't done this for me. Maybe you're a freeloader. You're trying to get by on the skin of your teeth. Neighbor, when you pay your tithes in full, it's God's responsibility to be your doctor, your lawyer, your healer, your surgeon, your friend that sticketh closer than a brother. (laughs) 
Old timers, you haven't heard preaching like that lately. Most evangelists now are trying to get you to remember their blessing plan. I heard a man the other day out there in Radio Land send in your tithes and offering to brother so-and-so. I've got the way of beautiful prosperity. The next breath he said, out there in Radio Land, if I don't hear from you this week, I'll have to go off this radio station. Praise God. I thought, my God, if you've got the plan, why are you giving it away? Why don't you use it yourself? <laughs> Say amen. Neighbor, as your provider, if you'll be honest with him, he'll be honest with you. I learned this when I was a little boy, about 12 years old. My father had a lot of farmers in his church. And most of them farmed two or three sections of land. And that land was as level as the palm of your hand. And they had marvelous artesian irrigating systems. And one afternoon, Chris Rackley, a German man in my dad's church, a very wealthy farmer, he called a house and he said, Brother Walker, come quick. The boll weevils are three miles down the road. They're literally wiping out every crop in sight. Brother Walker, come quick. I never will forget my daddy grabbed me out of the backyard where I was playing. We got in the car and I said, Daddy, where in the world are we going? He said, we're going to pray for a cotton crop. I said, really? I said, Daddy, I don't have a cotton crop ministry. And we got to the corner of the section of land in the country. And there sat Chris and his big black Cadillac. He got out and he said, Brother Walker, I've just had best my wife to check the books. And Brother Walker, our tithes are paid above and beyond. And we are going to claim the authority of God over our bumper crop. We estimate we're going to have two bales an acre in just two weeks on this cotton fields. Daddy said, son, you stand right here in the middle of the road. I said, daddy, what for? He said, I said, stand. And when you see me get at the next corner way down there and let your mama out, you'll know to start praying. I said, Daddy, are you all right? He said, hush. Do what I tell you. I watched my daddy's car disappear in the dust. And I saw my mama get out at the other corner of the section of land. I could just barely see her little figure. Then I saw the cloud of dust going down another road. He stopped in the other corner and let out Chris and Bess. And then I saw the car come back down another road, many miles down as it were. And I saw the big black car stop. The dust had settled. Neighbor, in the next few minutes, we five people begin to bombard glory in the heavenly world for a cotton crop where two bales an acre would be being produced in just a couple of weeks. And neighbor, did you know the bold weevils came right to the road and stopped? <laughs> two days later, had a page on the front page of the Lubbock Avenue Journal newspaper of bold weevils laying by the bushel loads and they were grading them up. Neighbor, when you have a friend like the man I speak about, you can find no fault in him. When you need somebody to take care of your crops, neighbor, he has a secret ingredient to draw a line around it and even the devil cannot cross that line. Hallelujah. Say amen. Somebody said, why do you do that? I'm unwinding. The other way, I'm winding. Neighbor, I find no fault in him. I find no capacity to criticize him. 
but instead I find a desire, an ambition, a longing, a surge to love him, to honor him, to live for him, to adore him, and to praise him, to magnify him, for he is my master, my Lord, and my soon coming Messiah. I find no fault in him. Do you hear what I'm saying, brother? It's time that you get to the place in God that you quit being mad with God or, or finding fault with Him. Uh, neighbor, nowhere in God's Word uh, or any other book uh, has God ever failed man. Uh, but man has failed God. It has never been recorded where God let His children go under, down, uh, or being cursed, uh, or doomed. Uh, but neighbor, He can still roll the waters back, uh, and we can go across dry shot. Uh, he can still feed us uh, by the ravens uh, of the air. He knows how. I find no fault in Him. I'm about to get raptured. I find no fault. You say, well, I don't know the guy you know. He disappointed me. Who do you think you are to confess publicly that God failed you? He didn't do it. Look in the mirror and you'll find the guilty one. I find no fault in him. Preachers may fail, but Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he changeth not. I find no fault in him. I'm guilty of sin. But he cries out, he's innocent. I should have been a crucified. But he loved me so much he took my place at Calvary. I find no fault in him. Think about it. Neighbor, I need him more than he needs Jerry B. I love him. I love him. I've loved him so much that I haven't given him just a potion but I'm striving to give him all asking nothing in return except his love I find no fault in him I can see him in Pilate's hall. And that angry mob cried out, crucify him. But Pilate said three times, I find. Do you love him? Oh, Brother Walker, I loved him, but he took one of my loved ones from me. Yes, I know. 
But have you ever stopped in the middle of your sorrow and looked toward the heavenly world and said, Father, thy will is done, not mine. And it could be that the Father needed an angel. I find no fault. When I lost all of my family in death and I felt so alone, God said to you, said to Jeremy, Jeremy, I give and I take away. And I looked at him once again and I said, Father, thy will is done. And he gave to me more than I ever lost. I find no fault. And I'm coming to the place in my relationship with Daddy God that I'm coming to that realm that I find no fault in my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. They may dance peculiar and they may do little doodaddies different than I would. But if that's the way they love God, all right. Today I was driving down Inkster Boulevard and I was thinking about Father Trask. I love him. And I'm sure that Mother Superior could tell me about a lot of faults. He probably squeezes the toothpaste in the middle. And he may leave the towel on the floor when he's through showering. Instead of putting the dirty glass in the dishwasher right beside the sink, he'll set it in the sink for somebody else to do. She finds no fault in him. Pastor, I've been with you five weeks. I've never witnessed any guile in your heart. Not one time. Pastor, not once have I heard you say one harsh word about a living soul. Pastor, I love you. I find no fault in him. Tonight, late this afternoon, I was with one of my friends going to the airport to pick up a very special person in my life. And he's a pretty good driver. And something was said about our coachman, Gerald Campbell. And I said, you know, Gerald is one of the sweetest kids I've ever known. I pray that he'll be with me till I become an old, old man, ready for retirement. And then when I can't be driven, he can push my wheelchair. I said, I only have one fault with him. He tailgates when he drives the car. And I smiled. And I said, but when he drives the big silver eagle, I find no fault in him. When you start cultivating that kind of relationship with our friends, it's beautiful. Instead of being toads, 
they become saints. Instead of being acquaintance, they become friends. We may criticize Pilate. But of all the statements that have ever been written about my master, his rewards are recorded in the sands of time. I find no fault in him. And I leave you with this last thought. If you find fault with the evangelist, may I jog your memory. I'm still under construction. I need him. Every hour I need him. Holy Spirit. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking. I'm going to make an invitation tonight to sinners, to backsliders, to lukewarm Christians. All with one invitation. I want every man, woman, lad or lassie in this house. You feel the need of Christ in your life. You feel the need of the Master in your life and you say preacher I'm sure he finds fault in me but I want to come to that place where he sees nothing but beauty for ashes you that feel like you want to make that soul commitment to be like him without any other thing being said without any other preliminaries if you want to be like him I want you to stand right where you are just stand right where you are preacher I want to be like Jesus I want to be like Jesus Jeremy, I want to be like Jesus. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. Preacher, I want my life to be Christ-like. I want you to stand wherever you are. Sing it with Ron. Everybody sing it. Oh.